Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Drop-In CEO Podcast. I'm Deb Kobe Ello, your host, and I am, again, so grateful that you've joined us. I am so thankful. Guess what? This is episode 400, 400. We pushed the button and started the Drop-In CEO Podcast February of 2020, and now I have the good fortune. I think this is going to air sometime in January. We are at 400 episodes, and I'll tell you quite honestly, I love the format of reaching through this microphone and connecting with you personally to be able to impart some thoughts, some insights, education to be able to help you. I have been doing this now for four years and I just want to be able to help you navigate your challenges with confidence. Now, I will tell you, we are changing the format a little bit, just a little bit, but always with storytelling and some insights that you can take away and implement yourself, or potentially I can partner with you. But the shift a little bit here is that I am focusing more specifically on the C-suite leaders, presidents, founders, um, CEOs, or just senior business leaders that are responsible for major initiatives, big cost savings, um, sales, whatever. Because sometimes along the way, you may be technically very, very good at what you do. That's how you've gotten to that position. But along the way, Along the way, something has changed for which you start moving into a place of chaos and potentially unattended to gets you to a place of crisis. Now, I'm that person that you can call in contact when you get to a place of crisis. But honestly, I would love to partner with you before you ever get to that place in time. Bef but, but the best time to reach out to me is when you're starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. There's a little bit of waste. There's a little bit of churn. There's a little bit of uncertainty in your organization. That's when you should revert to some trusted partner in your network, maybe myself, maybe somebody I know to be able to help you regardless of where you're at, because the worst time to call anybody is when you get into a terrible place of crisis. Now, what's different about this year is I'm also going to be sharing my real world examples for you. So you can see the challenges I've had to overcome and get through. And maybe some of this is going to resonate with you, but I just want to talk to everybody out there. If I start talking about mentorship, if I start talking about a lean organization, don't tune out because these are the scenarios and the context for which I'm sharing with you these stories, but the insights are absolutely transferable to anybody, regardless of where they are in their career, or positions in a company. So I, I beg of you, please stick with me because these topics are so real to me and may be quite real for you. And so we're going to talk about, again, it's the beginning of the year. I want you to start the year off right. And a big topic is making sure that you have something that is akin to a mentorship program whether it is separate from what the day-to-day -day running of your business. But I do propose to you that mentorship comes within the daily work, the weekly interactions that maybe you have with your team or your staff, because when you do meet with them on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, yes, you do need to talk about the tactical or strategic work, that needs to get done. But I implore you, I implore you, unless you help with their performance. And when I talk about performance, it is not the result, but it is those essential skills that they need to develop to really evolve their impact because unattended to, then you're dealing with a person that may not reach optimal performance and that's a negative impact on you. So listen, we need some form of a mentorship program. And let me give you an example. Now, I recently finished an opportunity with a particular client. I love them. I love them. I love all all my clients, regardless of the, of the opportunities or challenges. But one of the things we did is we did work on some operational improvements in their operations. That's what I do. But I will tell you, one of the things that was missing was having the right people on the bus. Because you can do all that relevant work, but unless you have the right people on the team, or you have a forum to have conversations with them about their performance. You're not going to reach optimal performance. And here's what happens. I see this time and time again. Hiring practices are normally an HR function to bring people on board that technically meet the requirements of a job description, but often fall short on evaluating the competencies and their essential, essential skills at a deeper level. And then what happens is we're all excited in the beginning, and then we get frustrated. 
and we get more frustrated about their ability to perform because we haven't fully understood their baseline competencies, their ability to confront difficult situations, to articulate messages, to be concise, to be well organized. And what happens is we get frustrated, we get bad performance reviews, people leave the organization, and then we destabilize the organization when we don't invest in mentorship. And I've seen this time and time again, and I will tell you from my personal experience, not moving away from my client, is I I, I was in a company, love this company, I can periodically go back and work for them, but I got to a particular level. I was a, a regional quality engineer, quality assurance professional, and I hit a wall. I couldn't move on. The only advice that I received along the way from somebody that was kind of a mentor was, you need to get your MBA. But it was never articulated to me, what would the benefit of an MBA do directly in elevating my ability to get higher and higher positions? So I never had a mentor within that company. Um, but I'll tell you now, now <laughs> in my own business, I have two mentors and a couple coaches along the way to help give me the feedback and, and insight and essential skill development that I need in order to, for maximum impact. Again, I hired somebody that's helping me with my video production because it's something I knew I need to do, but I just didn't understand it. Also had a message. Uh, I've got several people that have helped me with my messaging. Surround your people, uh, self with people that can mentor, but coming back to you in your organization, have you set up a framework for which you are regularly providing people feedback based on evaluating them against their essential skills. It is not something you do only at the performance review. Now, I know I'm being a little prescriptive and funny here, but I want to get in your ear. Having a mentorship program, having mentorship within the one-to-one -one process, whether it's weekly or monthly, Part of what you should already be doing to understand the capability of your team members and be able to close gaps in their essential skill performance, not the results. <laughs> That's where leaders get it wrong. Where do they have gaps in their essential skills and close their gaps and they will get the results. I know this. I have seen this. Watch people soar when you help them with their essential skills. And so I want you to have the essence of a mentorship program by and invest in your team for sustainable 2024 success. And in a moment, I will give you the details. And so we are back now with the details. <laughs> and, you know, the first thing said, I am going to give it to you step by step. It is simple. This is not rocket science. But you need to hear what you have to do in order to get started. So first of all, make sure your leaders are meeting with each team member weekly. Make sure that's in place. And this is different than the daily interaction about what's that report? Did you set up that customer call? Um, uh, can you send me that information? That you have to do as part of doing work. But once a week, maybe every two weeks, depending on your organization, we need to take a time out to just sit down, queue up topics that we do need to spend maybe a little bit more time on. But I propose to you the number one focus of these, session, these sessions is to discuss those essential skills or barriers. When we focus on the process improvements of their individual competencies, we unleash potential. You've heard me talk about this in previous episodes. I love this person from my past. They were already a technical expert, but they were having challenges in influencing, influencing leadership. And when we made some adjustments in what they should continue, what should they start doing, what should they change, they commanded the room and the information that they transcended and their ability to solve technical problems was amplified because we help them to have more influential messaging rather than just disseminating information. So we need to focus on essential skills and barrier removal to unleash potential. 
And within that same session, number two, you do focus on the strategic work. Where are they at in the initiatives? Discuss their thoughts, discuss the approach, discuss the barriers, and collaborate with them so that they are successful moving through the strategic initiatives based on unleashing their potential by evolving their essential skills. And then only last, last within these one-to-ones that you're going to have, focus on the tactical work, you know, specifics around a report. I need some IT support to be able to speed up my computer or something like that. Focus on the tactical items last. Start with the essential skills, then go to strategic and then go to tactical. It shows you care about the person. And lastly, Lastly, this is a hard one for senior senior leaders, be present and really listen to the person and their underlying concerns. And by the way, look at their body language, shut down your computer, shut down that cell phone, be present because they may be saying one thing, but if you read them, the words they say, the words they don't say, and their body language and the way they deliver information, you might see and feel something under in the undertow of what they're saying that could be a deeper barrier for which you need to explore and understand and resolve it so that they are successful. Because when we see them, we just see the tip of the iceberg, but we as leaders need to develop the skills to be able to read a person and truly understand, are they going to be successful or do we need to dig a little deeper and develop them? And that can only happen through mentorship. And really the last thing I want to say is, you're not here to keep your people forever. You need to see them for their greatest potential. During these development conversations, look at the person, how they're presenting themselves. What are their technical skills? What are their skills that we didn't hire them for, but they came with and see them in their future capacity. See them for what they really should be doing. What is their passion? What lights them on fire? Do you see them at the next higher level. And they just don't realize it because we as leaders need to develop those skills to see the future for our people so that they can see it and build the confidence and be that person. Cause then you're going to be part of pulling them forward into the next leadership position because you help them with their essential skills and you put possibilities in front of them of what they actually could be. That's our job is to promote our people into new positions, leverage their current skills and grow them. That's our legacy. And I will refer back to a a person I'm very fond of, Dave Hasse, who looked at me when we first met and I started my business and he could see far more than I ever could. And he still sees great things for me that I still haven't realized, but you need somebody to have your back and continue to lift you up and believe in you. And that's really what we need to do as leaders. So I'll tell you, getting back to my story when I worked for that CEO as the fractional chief operations officer, having gone through changing some people on the bus and bringing in some really great talent, but maybe they had some gaps in essential skills. I developed a process, a procedure, a standard, just the way I described it to you on how we need to be able to spend time with our people in an effective and efficient way to close gaps in their essential skills and be able to give them feedback in a way that's positive and actionable. What should they continue? What should they change? What should they start to evolve our people? That is time spent well. I even created a video for them so they could keep my legacy on what we should do so we can continually bring on great talent and sustain them and elevate them to their highest performance. And that could only be done because you as a leader have taken the time to invest in mentorship through the business process of meeting with your people regularly to eliminate barriers and also leverage their skills and their potential. And so that if you don't do that, you have built a business on a shaky foundation of talent. And those gaps and those cracks will be noticed when the planets are aligned against you. Now, I don't want to end this on a Debbie Downer note, (laughs) but this is a call for action. Ask yourself, do you really have the essence of good mentorship within your organization? Do you have the capability or capacity to do it? I know so many medium, small businesses say we just don't have time. We need to get the orders out. Yes, but if you don't do it now, 
those orders are going to get late and the quality of those orders are going to get worse because you haven't invested in people. People management is a good investment of time in the future. So there you have it. I hope that this was valuable to you, that everybody was able to glean some insights. I would love to partner with you to help maybe bring these steps maybe to fruition. Let me whiteboard with you, work with you on your specific situation. But if this was easy, you've got this, but you know some people that could leverage these insights, pass this podcast along as a valuable resource for them. But if you do have questions, reach out to me, reach out to me on my website, dropinceo.com, go to my contact page and schedule some time or direct message me on LinkedIn. I play there as well. And a quick pitch, if you are listening to me and you like video, head on over to my YouTube channel, Drop In CEO, and you can catch the full video here um, because I just know that I want to be able to reach out to so many people through my writing, through my audio, and through the beauty of video. And so with that, I am so grateful you've dropped in on another episode of the Drop In CEO podcast. I'm Deb Coviello, your host and servant leader, and I just want to wish you well and much success until we do meet again. And until then, you be well. And talk to you again soon.